Hi everyone, it's Sean here from Make or Create. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Uh, we are back. We are doing a video today uh, in partnership with our very good friends over at WizKids. Uh, today we are going to be doing a digital music making workshop. Uh, be sure to check out all, all our other videos that we're doing. We are going to be having a coding one, Ooh, a, um, a filmmaking one, very exciting, doing vlogs. We're going to be doing a digital animation and also a stop motion animation video. And as well as the videos that we're putting together for them, they've also got a whole host of other fun and exciting videos over at their website. So be sure to go and check them out. So uh, today what we're going to be doing is using Chrome Music Maker to make lots of different types of music. Um, I really love this website. Uh, it's brilliant because it doesn't matter if you're on a laptop like me or a tablet or a phone, as long as you've got access to the internet, you will be able to create music using this website. You don't need any accounts or anything like that. So it's dead straightforward to be able to, uh, to get into it. So without further ado, let's start making some music. So the first thing that you're going to need is to open up a web browser. It doesn't matter if this is Internet Explorer or Chrome like I'm going to be using or Firefox or oh, any of the other hundreds of different web browsers. All of them should work fine. We use Chrome because uh, we're going to be using Chrome Music Lab, so it tends to work quite well, but uh, it should work on pretty much any web browser that you are using. So uh, I'm just going to Google Chrome Music. And as soon as I've done that, the first one that pops up there is Chrome Music Lab, but I'll put it all in. Uh, there you go, Chrome Music Lab. And it's the very top one that comes up. Uh, so we just have to give that a click. And it opens it up. So uh, inside Chrome Music Lab, you can see we've got lots of different blocks here, loads of different ones. And these are what they like to call um, music experiments. These are the little experiments that they've put together. All of them let you write or compose or play with music in a slightly different way. And they're always adding to this. They've actually relatively recently uh, added this shared piano section in there. So that's a brand new experiment. So. Uh, it might be that when you're watching this video, that there's an even newer one in there. Uh, and we're going to look at, oh, quite a few of these different ones today. But the first one that we are going to start with is looking at the voice spinner. So the voice spinner on your page is this one here. Kind of looks like, if I take my finger off it a second, kind of looks like a yellow circle going around with a wave on it. And if you move your mouse over it, or if you click on your screen, if you've got a touch screen, it should say voice spinner. And that's the one that we want to load up first. So all we need to do is give that a click or a tap and that will load up the voice spinner. So let's do that. Depending on the device that you're using, mine's just loaded straight in here, but sometimes there's a little play button in the middle of the screen that you need to press to load it up. So if yours comes up with a little play button in the middle of the screen, just give that a tap and then you'll be in and able to use it. So now we've got this loaded up, we've got in front of us kind of like an orangey yellow sound wave that's going around in a circle. And this is a pre-recorded bit of audio that's in there. And this works quite similar to, ooh, if you think back, I'm sure you've all seen them, but those big black circles that have music on them, they call them vinyls or records. This works in a similar way to that, in that we need to spin our circle to be able to hear the audio that's built into it. Uh, and we can do this by using, at the very bottom of the screen, this command bar here. We can drag this right and we can drag it left. And depending on how much we drag it depends on how quickly the audio plays back. To get it to play at about the right speed, you want to drag it about halfway through to the right hand side. So if I grab this at the bottom and drag it to here. La -da -dum, la -da 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 -dum, la -da -dum, la -da -dum. There you go. So you can hear that in that audio, it's someone kind of la da dum, la da 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 dum. If we drag this all the way to the right hand side, we have it very high pitched and very fast. And if we drag it just a little bit to the right, la da dum, la da 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 dum. <laughs> Very slow, very low pitched as well. Almost sounds like they're going to bed or something like that, doesn't it? Very, uh, very slow. But we can also drag it left. And if we drag it left, what happens is... 
it plays it backwards. So again, if we drag it all the way to the left hand side, it plays it backwards very fast. <laughs> or if we drag it just a little bit to the left, it should play it very slowly and lowly, but backwards. <laughs> So feel free to have a bit of a play around with that. See what funny noises you can make with it or where you think it sounds best. Uh, and then once you've done that, we're going to have a go at recording our own voice into it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is have a go at recording our own voice into it. So to do that, in the very center of the screen, there's a little microphone button. Uh, and if I press this button, it's going to let me record my voice in. So... Obviously, as you all might be using different devices, this might require you to change permissions on your device. It might come up and ask if you're allowed to use the microphone and things like that. If it does, just click OK, and that will let your device use the microphone and you'll be able to record into it. So I'm gonna click on the microphone in the middle. This workshop's going really well. Oh, I think I just about managed to get that in there then. So let's play that back, see how it sounds. This workshop's going really well. Oh, I didn't this quite get it. This workshop's... I cut off going really well. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to record it. So don't be worried if you record yours in and it doesn't turn out exactly how you want it to. Uh, you can just record in again. So I'm going to try and be a little bit more quicker then. Uh, maybe I'll say something else. Okay. I hope we're all having fun at home. All right, let's try that one. I hope we're all having fun at home. Fantastic. So that was me about the same speed, but I want to hear myself going really quickly all the way to the right hand side. We're all having fun at home. We're all having fun at home. We're all having fun. Or maybe I want to hear it a little bit slower. <laughs> or if we really wanted to, we can hear it backwards. What? I love you all. I never knew that's how that sounded backwards. Uh, feel free to pause the video at this point if you want to have a little bit more fun recording a few more phases and saying them forward and backwards. Uh, yeah, and have fun. When you restart the video, we're going to be moving on to a different experiment. Okay, I hope you had fun doing that. We're going to go on to a different experiment now, a different music experiment using making music in a different way. Uh, so to do that, all we need to do is click on the back arrow, which will be in the top left hand corner of your screen. If we click this button, it takes us back to the beginning where we've got our different uh, experiments that we can have a play around with. The next one we're going to have fun with is called Piano Roll. So if I scroll down a little bit, it's this one here that's got a few dots on it. If I move my mouse off it a second so you can see, it's got a few different dots and a few lines at the bottom, and this one's called Piano Roll. And if we give this a click, it'll load it in. So, Piano Roll's a really fun experiment. It's basically pre-recorded pieces of music written in a language that we call MIDI in digital music. Uh, and the best way I think it can describe in this is if you might have seen it in Westerns or in really old uh, TV shows where they might have a piano with a piece of paper that gets fed through the piano. And on that paper, it's got little dots and little lines and that allows the piano to automatically play itself. This is basically like a digital version of that. And so every dot and every line on this screen represents a different note and how long it should be played for. So if I hit this play button in the middle of the screen, we can hear that the piano starts playing. Every time this line in the center of the screen touches one of these dots, it triggers another piece of music, another note to be played. So let's continue with this. And we can also change the instrument that's being played. So at the moment, we've got this kind of waveform at the moment at the bottom, which is like a little bit of a synthy sound. And if we click on the one that looks a little bit more like keys, we can change this so it sounds a little bit more like a piano. So if I hit the play button now, we can hear the different uh, change in that. Mm -hmm. 
Brilliant. Something else that we can do, a little bit like we did it in the piano, uh, sorry, not the piano, a little bit like we did in the voice spinner, is we can record our own noises into here. And this is what we call sampling. So sampling in music is when we will record something and then we will change it a little bit. So we're going to record our own voice into this and then we're going to have a go at changing it. And I think what I will do, and I think we should all do at home, is having a go at recording our own names into this. So if I click on this microphone again here, Sean. So all you need to do to record your sampling is to click on the microphone, say your word, and then click on the stop button and it will record it in. So I'm gonna do that one more time for you. Sean. And now when I hit the play button, What's happening is it's taking the word I recorded and to making it higher and lower to make it sound like it's fitting in with it. We can say any word we want here. Uh, so I've gone with my own name, Sean. Let's hear a little bit more of it. But you can record any noise you want into there. We can also have a listen to a few other songs with this being played in there, with our name being sampled in there. So if I click on this little arrow here and hit that play button, Uh, but we could record any noise we like in there. So I might, maybe I'll do a little bit of laughing. See what see what that sounds like. <laughs> so I'm inviting you now to have a go at making your own recording there, having a listen through it. Maybe have a listen to some of the other songs as well. We can go left and right in here, and we can have a listen to this one. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so what I would suggest you do now is if you pause this video and have a good five, 10 minutes of playing around with this, recording some different noises in there and seeing what it sounds like, see if you've got a favorite song out of the different ones that you can play it back to. And when you finish with this, unpause the video and we'll move on to our next experiment. Okay, I hope you had fun there with that. Uh, we're gonna go on to our next experiment now. And to do this, all we need to do is click onto this back arrow up here in the top left-hand corner, and it'll take us back to our experiments pages. Uh, now, what we're gonna have a little bit of a play around with next is oscillators. So again, if we scroll down, we are looking for this little chap here. So this uh, is called an oscillator, and the icon for it is a triangle, a pink triangle with a big smiley mouth. And if we give this a click, it'll load up our oscillators. And so what oscillators are, is basically an artificial noise which is created by using uh, different waveforms. Um, and uh, we've got a fun experiment here where we can hear how different styles or different shapes of wave sound and at different frequencies. So this one here is a square. And if I give it a click, <laughs> we can hear what it sounds like. One of the, I really like the animations on this one. One of the fun things we can do is if we uh, tap and hold down, we can move our mouse or you can move your finger up and down the screen and control the pitch of the noise. So you can kind of make it sound a little bit like a uh, UFO or a Doctor Who sounding uh, uh, sound effect as we're playing through it. So if we drag it higher, it gets really high. And if we drag it lower, it gets really low. And you can almost actually, when you drag it really, really low, you can hear the individual beats of it as it's coming through. Uh, so we've got square ones. We have got sawtooth. What's really fun about this is they've actually kind of made the characters the same shape as the waveform is that's in there. So if I, again, if I click on this, We can play it the exact same way, except the noise changes a little bit because this one's a sawtooth one. Next up, a triangle. That one's a little chap that is on the uh, on the front cover of it. 
And last but not least, we have my favorite one, which is a sine, which is sine wave, which is basically a circle, or when you're looking at it in waveform, a smooth curve going up and down like that. This one I think sounds the most UFO-ish. <laughs> okay, so uh, again, what I want everyone to do is give this video a pause at this point, and have five minutes just playing around. See if you found out which of your uh, oscillators is your favorite. What waveform do you like the most? Are you like me and like sine, or do you like triangles or squares or sawtooths? Yeah, let us know. Okay, hope you had fun though with that. We are going to move on to our next experiment now. And we're going to do that again by clicking on this little back arrow up here in the top left hand corner and jumping back into it. Now, the next one we're gonna look at is a little bit different. We're gonna look at a spectrogram. Uh, that's actually on the top row at the moment for mine. It's this one over here that looks a little bit, it's got the green and red lines going uh, horizontally across the screen. Um, and we're gonna just give this one a click on the spectrogram. And when it loads up, there's not very much actually on the screen. It just looks like a black screen, but uh, don't worry, this is really cool. So what a spectrogram actually does is it kind of takes audio and makes it into a picture. So it looks at the high frequencies and the low frequencies, and it gives them a different color depending on how loud them uh, tones and those frequencies are. Um, so there's lots of cool things that we can do with this one, but I'm going to start with my favorite thing to do, uh, which is to use the microphone. So to use the microphone, you just click on this symbol here, which is at the uh, bottom left uh, symbol of a microphone, and we give that a click. It starts working, and now you can see on screen my voice. So we can see that it's a little bit low, so it's, there's a lot of reds at the bottom, and the reds indicate where the noise is coming through the most. And we use this sort of technology with these microphones on technology and apps like Alexa. So when you say Alexa and it comes to life, that's because it's been listening and it's seen the right frequencies and the, light, the right picture come up, the right spectrogram come up uh, and knows to trigger it on. It's also very similar with uh, things like Shazam, apps like that where it knows what music's playing and things. So if you ever use an app like that, this is the technology that lets it work. So. What I want you to do is have a go at saying your voice, saying your name, seeing what it looks like. Is yours similar to mine? Is it going higher? Is it going lower? Have a play around with it and see what it looks like. Because we're using a microphone, we don't just have to use our voices. We can use all sorts of things. So for example, if I click, It looks very different. You can see that that's going right the way across the frequency boundary when I'm doing it. But it's very sharp and very ends really quickly. And if I whistle, it's only coming on through at a very, very small point. So all different types of noises make different styles of uh, waveforms and different style of uh, imagery. Uh, we can do this in a few different ways. We've got a few different examples down here. So let's see what a pigeon sounds like. Birds. Or a trombone. Very different. Or a flute. Or a modem. <laughs> I'm sure some of you won't have ever had to listen to this, but the older listeners, I'm sure, will, be, will remember this, this tone very well. And last but not least, a wine glass. Ooh, very nice, very curved.
Okay, so what I would do is invite you to spend, uh, pause the video here and spend five or 10 minutes having a quick play around with this, maybe find some other things that you can record to see what that looks like on the spectrogram. Okay, welcome back. Finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to another experiment. So all we need to do is click on this arrow back here to get back to our experiments. And we are gonna look at one of my very favorite experiments right now, we're gonna look at Kadinsky. So uh, it's this one here where you can see kind of a face, a little circle face, a triangle and some lines underneath it. And if we hover our mouse or click on it, you see that it says Kandinsky. And all we wanna do is give that a little click. And we are greeted with a kind of a blank canvas. And this is named after an artist, this one. And what this artist used to do is he compared uh, painting and composing pictures to uh, composing music. And so it's based after his work. And what we can do is draw on our screen and we can either use, use this with our mouse or with our finger. And if we draw a line, it makes a noise. So I drew that one quite low on the screen there and it made, makes this noise. But I can also draw them high up on the screen. If I draw them high, it makes a higher noise. So depending on where we play, put our marks on the screen depends on how high or low they are. But as well as making uh, squiggles like this, we can also make shapes. So a couple of shapes we can make are triangles. And when we make a triangle, it sounds a little bit like a drum. So that one sounds a little bit like a wood block, but if I make it a bit lower, it sounds like a bass drum and a little bit higher, cymbal. So we've got lots of different drum sounds we can make. And as well as this, we can also make uh, another noise by making circles. So if I draw a circle, <laughs> we see that little face appears here and we can make it look a little bit like uh, like a little dom, like a, almost a vocal noise. <laughs> and once we've drawn a little bit of a picture in there, we can hit this play button in the middle to play it back. Brilliant. So uh, that's a little bit of a rough drawing. We can also change the noises of this by clicking on this button here and changing the different colors. So if I change the colors to the orange and yellow one, or the uh, purple and pink one, Brilliant, so you can change the sounds of them. If you put in one of the sounds that you don't like the sound of, you can just click this undo button until you've got rid of it and you can replace it with another noise that you like. So maybe I wanted to put a circle in there, and a circle in here. You can replace them with whatever noises you want. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is have a go at making your own piece of music art. So. What I'm looking for is a random collection of circles, squiggles, and triangles that make a song. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and spend five minutes putting together a collection of shapes, playing them back until you're happy with them. So pause the video now and have a go at doing that. Okay, for the next challenge, what we're gonna do is have a go at adding our names to our songs. So. I'm gonna spell out my name, which is Sean. So I start with an S, so I'm gonna draw a nice big S. And then I'm gonna draw an E, but instead of just drawing an E with a, a line, I'm gonna try and add in one of the drum noises. So I'm gonna put a triangle in here. Lovely, and then I'm gonna put the E at the bottom. And then I might try and see if I can get, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna put an O in there for the A. So I'm gonna do a little circle, put a little tail on it and then put an N. So let's see what this sounds like. Brilliant, so I might try it with a few of the colors. I think I like this one 
in the orange. So I'm going to try it with the orange. And what I'm going to do now is just decorate this with a few extra little bells and whistles around the outside. Let's see what this sounds like. Hey. Okay, so that's our next challenge for you. I want you to make your own masterpiece, but this time including your name in it and give it a playback and see what it sounds like. Why don't you pause the video here until you've completed it and you've listened back to it and it sounds like you want it to. Okay, cool. We're back in the room. I hope that your name looked and sounded brilliant. We're going to do one last thing on the Kaczynski experiment, and that's to add in a self-portrait. So I'm going to use the undo button here to get rid of my uh, last drawings. And I'm going to do a little self-portrait of myself. So I'm going to start by drawing a big circle for the head. I've already got a couple of eyes actually in this one, so I'm going to draw a big spider that's smiley face. And I've got a beard, so I'm going to draw a beard on mine. But obviously, you want to colour it, you make yours like yourself. So if you've got her, you'd be drawing some hair on the top. If you've got a big smiley face, you want to make sure there's a smile on there. You might put your nose on there. You're going to put your ears on there. So I'm going to put some ears as well. I might draw the ears as circles, maybe. Like that. <laughs> uh, and then let's get some lines going off it as well. Nice little pattern around the outside. I think this is possibly the best picture of me that's ever been taken. Well, let's have a listen to how this one sounds. <laughs> and there we have it. Our self-portrait piece of music. We can change the colours as with the other one, see which one sounds best. Let's try it in pink and purple. Okay, and that concludes our whistle stop tour of Chrome Music Labs. As we can see from the experiment pages, there's loads of other experiments that you can have a play with. So don't stop here, carry on having a go through these and having some fun making music. Just like to say a massive thank you to WizKids, our partners on this video. Without them, this video wouldn't be possible. Be sure to check out their website for all the other cool videos and check out ours for other things that we're doing. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Have fun. <laughs>